Hey homemakers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shirley and I talk about traditional homemaking skills for the modern day homemaker. And in today's video, we're going to be making a pair of farmhouse sconces. Never knew that it could feel this way when you lie next to someone. You don't even need to play pretend cause you're fine. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know one thing I struggle with as a homemaker is home decor. I've been trying so hard to make our home a nice, warm, and inviting place. So when my friend Natalie from Design to the Nines and her co-host Jessica from Measure and Mix invited me to do their Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge, I knew God was giving me the opportunity to step outside of my comfort zone. The power tool part, that was easy. It was trying to come up with a way to use them in the design world. A while back, I saw some sconces on Etsy that were at $58 and I was not about to pay that price. So I figured this was the perfect opportunity for me to try to recreate them for this challenge. I'm so happy with the way that these turned out and the best part is I paid less than $10. Once you're done watching my video, I invite you to check out Natalie and Jessica's video as well as all of the other talented ladies by clicking the playlist in the description box. All right, let's get started with the tutorial. The first thing you're gonna need are two pieces of wood measuring 14 by five and a half. I used poplar board and it was only a little over $2 for a huge piece. I don't have an electric saw, so I had Home Depot cut mine down to size. The wood is gonna have rough edges and blunt sides so take your power sander and give it a good sanding on all sides. I used 220 grit sandpaper and I made sure to focus on the edges and the corners because I really wanted it to have that worn and weathered look to it. Once you've got the wood smooth on all sides, we're going to drill some pilot holes for the brackets, but we'll install those later. Since the wood is five and a half inches wide, take a tape measure and measure two and three fourths inches and make a small mark with a pencil. This is your center mark. Now you're gonna take your bracket and line it up with your center mark and use the pencil to mark the holes that are already in your bracket. Next, you wanna make sure that your drill bit will not go all the way through your wood. And this way you'll make sure that you're not gonna damage your work surface. I used a one and 16 inch drill bit and you're gonna go ahead and use that to drill your pilot holes. Now we're going to paint it and I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I applied it with a foam brush. I painted most of the top, but left a small part in the corner so that I could hold it while I painted all the sides. And then I just came back and finished up painting the top. While I waited for that to dry, I worked on my mason jars. A little tip that I learned was to paint the rim and the bottom first, and then paint your sides. And this helped me to have a nice, smooth finish with my brush strokes. When it's time to take the mason jar off of your hand, I found that it helped if I placed the rim on a scrap piece of wood and I used the brush to guide it off of my hand. And this way I could get it off easily and then I could just go over the bottom a little bit to smooth it out. One thing I learned is that you really wanna make sure that your paint dries completely on your glass before going ahead and making a second coat. I painted the second coat too soon on this one and the paint lifted a little and I had to give it a third coat in some areas. Once everything has two coats and it's completely dry, it's time to install the hanging brackets. This is so simple because the holes are already there from the pilots that we made before. You're gonna just line up your bracket and drill the screws into place. I wanted mine to have that rustic look, and so I added some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant to all of the edges. To do this, I added a tiny bit onto the box from the brackets, and using the side of the foam brush, I dipped it in the paint and brushed off as much of it as I could. Then I just lightly ran the brush along the edge, and then before it dried, I used a dry side of the brush and smoothed out the paint so it just didn't look so harsh. I did this on all the sides and I really like how it added some dimension to the wood and it made it look old and worn, which is exactly what I was going for. Then I got my mason jars and I used my nail to give the mason jars that weathered look. This was surprisingly easy. I've seen this before and I always thought it was so much harder to accomplish than it really was. 
This was really, really simple. I just used my nail to scrape the paint from the part of the jar that I didn't want there anymore. Now we're gonna add the jute to the top of the mason jar so that we can hang it. I bought mine from Walmart because it's nice and thick and it holds to the jar really well. But I know that they have some twine at Dollar Tree if you're interested in grabbing it from there. So what you're gonna do is cut a piece that's 23 and a half inches long. On one side of the mason jar, put a bit of hot glue. Line up the jute with the bottom of the jar and secure the jute in place where you put your hot glue. Then just do the same thing to the other side. When you're done with that, tuck that piece of jute inside the jar so it stays out of your way. This is gonna help later. Starting from the back, put another dot of hot glue and secure another piece of twine. I wrapped mine three times and I secured it each time with a dot of glue in the back. When you're done, cut off the excess and glue that down as well. Now it's time to secure the hanging piece. Make a knot with the two pieces of jute. I made two knots for extra security and then I glued it down so that it can really hold the weight of the jar and I just repeated the same thing on the other side. Add a little bow to the front and you are almost done. For the greenery, I used one sprig of boxwood from Walmart for each jar. And there you have it, an Etsy dupe for a fraction of the cost. Let me show you how the finished product looks on my wall. I love this hanging in my living room and it was so easy to make. I'm thinking about actually making some of these as Christmas gifts. I didn't think that I would find that someone who's as honest as you are. The way you make me feel at night when I am vulnerable and it's cold outside, but you make it all right. Detail. I won't judge you as you know I could stay forever When I'm lying in your arms Oh My heart is open It just took some time Now I just hope that you stay for a little while You'll fix what's broken When you make that All right, guys, if you enjoyed making video then make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos next week we have another homemaking DIY so make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss it but in the meantime check out these two videos right here I talk about all things home related from cleaning to organizing anything that has to do with managing the home so make sure to check out these two videos while you wait thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week